Right, this is a fairly simple project. For the base, I'm using our extra thick film. It's a uh, half a millimeter thick, 500 micron, and that's enough to hold the clock mechanism. If you haven't got our extra thick film, you need a piece of plastic which is strong enough to hold the clock mechanism, but doesn't react to the paint. And also, obviously, you'll need to be able to cut it with scissors. You could even use glass if you can get someone to, to cut you the right shape piece of glass and drill the hole through the middle. But I do know people who do it on glass. But I'm using the extra thick film. First thing I'm going to do is take off the white cover. Remember, there's a cover on each side. So I'm taking off the white cover like that. And the next thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is mark the other side so I know that it has got the film on it and I'm not going to be able to take the... There we go. I am going to be able to take the plastic off, I hope. Just a little bit on the edge. There we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of paper in there, just like that. And that means I will know right away, just for now, which is the side which has still got the film on. That side's got the film on. I'm going to work on this side. The next thing I'm going to do is get my design. I've got a few designs around. Can't let you have two of these designs because they're copyright. I'll let you have the third one. And I will let you have some blank clock templates so you can make your own design, but I've just got the numbers, etc. on the outside. Now, I'm putting that roughly. It doesn't have to be exactly centre. This is for the round. If I was doing the square clock, which I'll show you later, I would do it on the edge. But I'm doing the round, and all I'm doing is marking the center of the bit I need to uh, drill out. Uh, let me see if I can show that to the camera. So that's the bit. Just mark the center spot there, which I need to drill out take that way and I'm going to take this downstairs now and drill it and what I'm going to use is this which is a countersink bit I'm going to do it from that side and I'm going to flip the it over and just do it that side to take the edges away I'll probably also need to just use my craft knife to take away any burrs but that gives me the hole I have got one over here I did earlier. And you can see I've got the hole drilled in there. I hope you can see that. That's the hole. Huh. So I've done that with the countersink bit. Now, next thing I'm going to do is stick this on. Making sure I've got my film the right way around. That was the, the point of the paper tab. And making sure the hole lines up. Now the hole has to be, for my clock mechanism, between about 8mm and 10mm across. And I know that that is the right size. And I know that is the right place because the hole matches up. Move it to the side for a minute. Now I take my glue and I want to make sure I get all the edges in particular. It doesn't have to be a lot. Enough to make sure the edges are well covered and a little bit in the middle. There we go. This is just a clear PVA glue. Get my brush. I say make sure all the edges are covered. Spread a little bit in the middle. Don't want to put too much glue on, otherwise it will crinkle. And again, making absolutely sure it's the right edge. So I'm putting this on the back, which is the side which has still got the film on. The back has still got the film on. I should have pointed out, and I didn't. I'm going to do it the other way around so I can see where the hole is. 
I should have pointed out that I did wash this film after I had drilled it. There we go. That's now stuck on. Get as many crinkles out as possible. But I can see now I need to move that slightly. There we go. Make sure it is lined up on the whole. And now I can leave that to one side to dry. Luckily I have one here which is already dry, different design, but it's already dry. See the, the holes lined up and the next bit to do is to cut it out. Now I tend to stay just this side of the green line. I won't make you watch all this, I don't think. Or I might make you watch it, but speed it up. And I'm just going to stay just to the edge of the green line, because I want to outline that green line. Again, I'll let you have... Actually, I can let you have this full design. But I will also let you have a blank template for this astrologically themed clock and you can see it's coming away slightly there I will put some more glue on it in a while for now I'm just gonna do that to get rid of that bit and there it is cut out try not to bend it too much when you're cutting it out because you want it to be nice and flat when you're painting and piping it. I have got another one here. I don't need to change it over really. But I will glue that, re-glue that side down. Maybe. Should be able to pipe it without. But you can see that's coming off. So may well glue that back down. So here's one I did earlier. Properly glued, still glued down this one. And obviously it's ready for piping. Now if you haven't glass painted before, the basics of glass painting are always you pipe the lines, that gives you a raised surface, and then you're flood filling with paint in between. Now I choose to pipe out of a piping bag like this. And if you look at our other videos, you'll see there's ones on outlining and there's even one on how to make this piping bag and how to use it. So I'll get my outliner. Put in more rather than less. If you don't use some, you can always put it back into the bottle later. That bottle's nearly coming to an end. Roll in the wings and roll it up. You roll it up and then as you're piping and as the, you're using the outliner up, you just roll it down a little bit further and that makes sure there's always outliner coming out. Obviously you want to cut the end to the thickness of the line you want and I don't want a very thick line here so I'll start with less let me just find a bit of paper to try that out on yeah that's fine um, start always start by cutting off less because you can always cut off some more later but you can't add it back on but I want some quite fine lines around here and it's always lift up so touch lift and then let it lay down by itself touch lift let it lay down by itself I just follow that 
design. Don't worry if you can't get every little bit. And again, I'm not going to show you all of this, but touch, lift, and it lay down by itself. Now I will reiterate what I always say about piping. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it, leave it. Let it dry, and once it's dry, you'll be able to lift it off with a craft knife or something very carefully, and then touch it back up again. What you don't want to do is start trying to wipe it off. You'll make an awful mess. Anyway, that's this piece piped, and we shall leave that to dry. Okay, well, the outline is dry on this now, and it's time to start painting. I will just explain, I tend not to use transparent colours in the centre bit particularly, because you would see the clock mechanism behind. So I tend to stick to things like um, pearlized colours, fantasy prismy, fantasy moon, the more solid colours. Now, some of the colours I need aren't available, so um, ignoring what's actually on the bottle, this one is a mixture of transparent brown and the Pabio Prismi, um, this is the white, called eggshell white, which is a pearl colour. So I've mixed those two together to give me a brown pearl type colour. Uh, this is a Pebio Fantasy Moon, which is ooh, Veil of Smoke. There you go. So I'm going to use these two colours and some others, obviously. But as much as possible, I'm going to stick to using pearlized type colours in the centre. So I've got a picture down here you can't see. And that tells me what colours I need to go where flood filling, making sure it gets right up to the line. So it's more pushing the paint around than it is brushing. You may notice I'm using my solid paintbrush. You don't have to use a solid paintbrush. I just find it easier when I'm switching colours. I'm going to leave that to dry because my next colour is going to go in these bits and I need that. So I need this one to be dry first. So leave that one to dry, then I'll do the next colour. Well, the first colour isn't quite dry yet, but it is tacky dry, so I should be safe to go on with the second colour. Again, I've got the picture by me about what I should do so hopefully I'll get the paint in the right places I'm going to make this last bit I show same technique push it up to the edge and after that this I'm just going to go away and finish painting not only this clock but the others I had on the go as well and show you the result As you can see, I've finished painting all three clocks. You saw part of each of these earlier. A couple of things to mention before we do the final part. I carried on mixing my paints. Uh, this is a good example. The green here is green gold transparent, which is a Pebio color, and mixed with the eggshell white, and that gave a nice opaque green color. And same with the yellow 
on this one eggshell white and transparent yellow to give an opaque white with a nice mottled look another thing to mention I don't know if you can see on both of these I've added little silver dots or stars whatever you want to call them and on this one I've added silver dots and gold over piping on the symbols around the outside just to make them stand out now both the silver dots both the silver and the gold outliner with a homemade outliner I tend to buy black outliner because I get through a lot of it but if I just want a bit of silver or gold or any other color if it comes to that I make my own and there is another video on making your own outliner okay the final part of this is going to be to add the clock mechanism so let's get shot of two of those and we'll just work on this one very simple here is my clock mechanism which I purchased off the internet just a, a standard quartz mechanism rubber washer there Oops. and it will go on like that now I've got a gold washer which goes on next on the front and the nut to tighten that all together now obviously as I tighten that I shall want to make sure the hanger on the back is pointed upwards I normally find that hand tight is enough on this and there's no need to get anything else I will say I bought the mechanism these the, the center bit the spindle um, you can get different sizes I just get the one to which does up to I think five millimeter um, I mean this is less than a millimeter probably a millimeter or so once you take the outliner into account even if I were to do it on glass I'd only do it on three mil glass so this one this spindle which goes up to about five millimeter is, is fine for everything I need what I don't want to do is buy one with a really big spindle because that will make everything stand out far too much similar situation with the hands they come in different sizes I always tend to buy the largest I mean if you look at that that's going to go on there it has got a cover on it which I will need to take off but that is going to go on there um, obviously far too large the good thing is you can just cut them down in size with scissors let me just take the backing film off there or the protective film I should say because it's not on the back it's on the front there it goes that is going to press down onto there I won't do it yet because the small hands going going to go on first but I just want to get the size I want this will go right onto the edge the smaller hand will stay back a little bit so get my scissors I marked where I wanted it or I held it with my fingers and I will just cut straight across there and that should be the size for the large hand equally a small hand I want to come back to about make sure there's a difference in the two so about there you can always do it too big you can always take a little bit more off but I won't that's absolutely fine and again I'm just going to take the covering film off that if it chooses to come there we go get rid of those and finally we have the second hand obviously we don't want it coming over the edge actually that's not too bad I'm just going to nip a little bit off the end of that one the reason I buy the big hands is I know that when I buy them I, I'm not buying them for a specific project 
So I don't exactly know what I'm going to be using them for. So by having the big hands, the largest size hands all the time, I can assure they should be suitable for anything I want to do. Now those just press down onto there. Some are press, some are screw. And I must admit, I'm not 100% sure which one this is. That seems to be screwing down onto there. And that seems to be on. I'm just try and make sure the hands will go by. Now I can see those two hands are getting stuck already. So what I need to do is bend the large one down a little bit. There we go. Always bend the second hand up slightly. And just make sure all the hands will go past each other without getting stuck. And there we are. There is our finished clock. And I've put a battery in that and it should work absolutely fine. I'll go ahead and do the other two. Then we'll take some photos and see what they look like. Just before we look at the final pictures, I'd like to mention this, which is a self-standing clock. Now, it was made in exactly the same way on a sheet of um, the extra thick film. But instead of cutting off the bottom, I've folded it back. So that's folded back, and that just makes a nice self-standing clock. If you're worried about it, it shouldn't tip up too much. But if you are worried about it, you can always put some weight on the back. But as you can see, that's a self-standing clock made in exactly the same way, but by not cutting off the spare at the bottom of the extra thick sheet, but by folding it back and using it as the stand. 